I think the uh, happiest moment of my life was uh, when I uh, realized in Delhi that uh, uh, I was learning political science uh, for the benefit of humankind. Uh, that a student, uh, you know, learns for becoming an officer or a, uh, you know, some um, career to earn money. But uh, I had some great teachers. So, um, so I think my uh, my. Uh, study in Delhi. Uh, I come from a uh, state, uh, Odisha state, you know, where which is full of poverty and so on, but culturally very rich. So I was looking for some way to find better meaning in uh, in one study, one life. So when I met uh, a few teachers who really inspired me, then opened up new areas of study. Uh, so my uh, studies in Delhi became my happiest moment. Then I went to Berkeley. Uh, there, that was the time when the whole world was raising new questions about capitalism, about uh, you know Soviet Union, about uh, American war in Vietnam, and so on. So this feeling became even more uh, consolidated. Then I chose to study India and China. Uh, precisely to understand the world because you know until then I was feeling that uh, we were um, getting sort of one-sided history of the world one kind of knowledge one kind of history of thought history of philosophy so uh, then I decided to become a teacher and be part of that movement so uh, you know that has been a happy period my daily Berkeley uh, you know, those studies and the inspiration from the teachers. Then I got some great students who became my, uh, you know, very important source of inspiration to carry forward this kind of idea. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm very happy that, uh, you know, some of the institutions with, uh, with which founding I was associated, the Institute of Chinese Studies, that study China to study the world uh, as, uh, you know, another part of the world that has great history, great civilization, uh, which told me to realize that all parts of the world have history and civilization, you see. Um, and uh, so that became, uh, similarly, the Developing Countries Research Center, which we started in Delhi University. I was its founding director. Again, it was to really bring knowledge about Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Uh, to India so that we uh, raise questions about history, about philosophy, about, uh, you know, development uh, in a new way. Uh, in Odisha, we started a institution, Development Research Center, Gavesh Chakra. I was its founder president for 20 years. And uh, again, from that situation of poverty, we wanted to study world history and world uh, development process. Uh, so all these fell in one path of trying to understand and discover, uh, you know, the great future of the world. You are not only a scholar, you are also an activist. <laughs> Can you tell us more? Yes, you know, I uh, became a member of the uh, civil liberty movement uh, during the um, late 60s, um, part of the Odisha Civil Liberty Movement to defend the rights of uh, illegally arrested people uh, and so on. Then after the emergency, we founded the uh, uh, People's Union for Democratic Rights, PUDR, which is now you know, more than 30 years old. Uh, and then uh, in the, because we found that, uh, you know, civil liberty and democratic rights, democratic rights meaning right to freedom of speech, but also right to work, right to gender parity, right to uh, end caste inequality, and so on. Uh, and peace is very important. So we started the Pakistan-India People's Forum for Peace and Democracy. Uh, I became a, its president um, a few years ago, uh, until recently. So, so peace and democratic rights. And then third world network of peace and uh, development dialogue um, uh, became a passion 
uh, to really participate in this process of transformation of the world. Can you tell us a few interesting stories? <laughs> there must be so uh, many. Many, many, yeah, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, when, when we started the uh, Institute of China Studies, I tell you, uh, people said, um, you know, uh, why you want to study only China? Uh, we said, look, between uh, India and China, there has been this war, uh, which has been the result of misperceptions and misunderstandings. And other people took advantage of this situation. And I can tell you, if these two big countries have peace and mutual understanding, it will have effect on their own development and on the development of the region and the whole world. So a few of us insisted that we will have the, we started it as a Wednesday seminar on China 40 years ago in a lawn of a, a supper house lawns. Then it became a program. Now it is a full-fledged institute. And now everybody says, oh, what a foresight you people had. Uh, my colleagues are no more. Uh, three of the co-founders are no more. Only me and Professor Tan Chung in America, we are alive. And, uh, but we have created a new generation which is taking it forward. So, um, so confronting, uh, we were told, we were, they called us anti-national when we started the China Institute. I became very active in the India-China Friendship Association. They called, it, called us anti-national. I said, sorry, for India's patriotic duty, it is my you know, duty to promote India-China understanding and scholarship. Same on Pakistan-India, when we said that, look, human rights violation in Kashmir by the Indian Army police forces uh, have to be condemned. Uh, you have to win the hearts and minds of our Kashmir brothers and sisters. People thought we were, again, you know, uh, anti-national. But today, everybody appreciates the work we did during the last 25 years. So, um, you know, these are the interesting stories. Oh, one, um, you know, I was vi visiting Mount Thai, the Wu Thai Mountains, after a seminar in Taiwan, Taiwan, uh, Shanxi. And uh, as we were climbing the Buddhist, uh, you know, the steps towards the pagoda, there were some, uh, you know, Buddhist monks and their followers. Suddenly they did namaskar and they wanted to touch my feet. I said, why? They said, uh, you are from the land of Buddha. Uh, I said, look, um, yes, but China has more Buddhists today than India has. So I should touch your feet. You know, I, I did, did namaste. Another interesting story in Karachi, Pakistan. We were having the India-Pakistan uh, general conference in Karachi, joint uh, convention. We were taking tea, strolling in the street. Then the tea seller said, you are from India? I said, yes. Said, oh, you people are doing a great job. I have a request, can you do it? What? You know, this railway track, which links uh, India and Pakistan in Rajasthan, in uh, Kokrapar, uh, has been closed since 65 after the Indo-Pak conflict. Can you please try to get it open so that we go, uh, you know, 100 kilometers across uh, to India. Now we are going about 2000 kilometers via Lahore, Delhi, you know, like that. Uh, then we came uh, and they refused to take money for the tea and the snacks we had taken. They said, no, you are our guest. Then we initiated and our proposal was accepted by the two governments. And in one year's time, this was in 2002, in 2003 and 4, the railway started working. Today it is working. You know, these are some small things that ordinary teachers and uh, social workers like us uh, have participated in. You impress us uh, with your hope and optimism. And so where does that come from? It, it comes from the, the love, the respect and the small, um, you know, uh, things one has got uh, throughout in all countries, from my village to wherever uh, I have gone, uh, and my teachers, my students, my friends, my collaborators in different countries. We have built up a, 
you know, a community of you know, democratic activists all over the world to, uh, you know, to create a world of peace and uh, democracy and equality. So that is, that is the source of my hope. <laughs> One last question. Uh, so what did your parents do? What kind of family? My, my, did you yeah, do? my father was uh, a homeopath doctor. Uh, uh, and in the freedom fight, he was a uh, school student, Banar Sena. Banar Sena means Mahatma Gandhi, when he went to Odisha, a group of young students decided to join him, and he was one of them. So, I, uh, you know, he was a great source of inspiration. From my childhood, I have seen him treating his Muslim patients, uh, the uh, Dalit patients, as well as upper caste patients equally. He would go to their houses, serve the you know, ill and desperately ill um, uh, you know, patients. So he was a great source of inspiration. He died two years ago at the age of 95. And um, uh, so the, my, my, uh, my mother was a houseworker, but a great uh, uh, you know, humanist. And my elder brother renounced the family to become a uh, a divinity worker by joining a divine life society, set up a school and uh, gave full time uh, to train students. So uh, we, uh, he has a different path of religious service, I have a different path of secular service, but uh, you know, he is also a source of inspiration to me and my teachers above all.